What's good, TMG fam? It's your boy L, and I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. So, listen, man, we're gonna get into the next video, bro. A man gives his girlfriend a necklace, and years later, she realizes what's inside. Listen, bro, do you ever have. Like that, that was crazy. I thought my phone was on silent and I always forget. And then somebody's calling me at the same time. Try to call him back. But anyway, do you ever like hear like strange alerts from your phone that you didn't even set or know that that made that kind of noise? That's what just happened to me just then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But anyway, man gives his, gave his girl friend a necklace. Years later, she realized what's inside now. I know you like me and trying to figure out in your brain without even watching the video, what could he possibly left inside of a necklace? You know what I'm saying? Like a picture or something. Like what if it was like a strand of hair or something? Uh, uh, I don't know. See how weird my brain is, bro? I'd be like, what if it was like a tooth or hair or, or something? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's weird, bro. That only he could have left or something like that. I'm... Uh, it's, I'm sick. Sicko mode. Yes, Travis Scott, sicko mode. I'm sorry. We're going to check this video out, though, man. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, join the fam, and uh, let's go. Hello, everyone. Remember the famous line from Twin Peaks? The owls and are not what they seem. Today's video will prove to you that this is not just some nonsense. No, we're not going to talk about mysticism and spirits. It's just that some things can really surprise you. Imagine that the strange vase that's collecting dust in your closet is actually a priceless ancient Greek amphora, or that the painting that you inherited from your great-grandmother is an unknown work of Van Gogh. Do you think that's impossible? Well, make yourself comfortable. We have some stories that will surprise you. Let's get it on. I be forgetting there be other clips in it, and it's just not based around the title of the video. So it's it'll at some point get to that, but it's still a bunch of other clips. I be forgetting that too, but I'm like, Unexpected finding. The $165 million detective story was revealed in 2017, when Ron Roseman was preparing to sell the estate of his deceased Aunt Rita and Uncle Jerry Alters in New Mexico. The house of a modest married couple who traveled a lot was full of various things that they brought from around the world. To avoid unnecessary hassle, Ron decided to sell them all to an antique dealer, including a strange painting hidden from prying eyes behind the bedroom door. The dealer offered $2,000 for all the stuff, but the picture caught his eye. The silhouette of a woman, drawn in sloppy strokes, seemed extremely familiar, and it soon became clear why. The very first visitor to the dealer's store exclaimed after barely glancing at the canvas, that's a painting by Willem de Kooning. The story gets even more exciting. After doing some research on the internet, the dealer found out that the work of one of the leaders of abstract expressionism was considered a gem in the collection of the University of Arizona Museum of Art and was stolen more than 30 years ago. But how could such a treasure end up in the hands of a simple teacher and a pathologist? The FBI is still figuring this out, but most likely the Altus had some secrets. The painting called Woman Okra was stolen in the early morning in 1985. There were no cameras at the exhibition, and while the lady was distracting the guard, her partner simply cut the canvas from the frame. The composite sketches resemble the faces of the altars, but the main ev oh, ho, 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 ho. Dang, and you thought you was about to come up off of this painting when you realized after all this time, well, not after all, after you bought it from somebody who had it all this time, that it was stolen, bro? That, oh, talk about luck. Oh man, listen, y'all here receiving stolen property, bro. Evidence is a story written by Jerry. In it, he describes how a woman and her daughter steal an expensive jewel from the museum and hide it behind a secret panel in the house. Apparently, this is not entirely fiction. Cars in the Barn 
Attention to all lovers of retro cars. This story might hurt you a little. From the 1950s to the 1970s, entrepreneur Roger Bayon had been collecting cars, dreaming of exhibiting them in a museum, but his dream was not destined to come true. After the man died, his son became the new owner of the collection, Though he wasn't at all interested in cars, he then passed the collection to his children. They believed that this was just some junk rusting in the barn under the sheets of iron and wanted to dispose of the vehicles. However, they decided to contact the auctioneers from Art Curial Motor Cars first to estimate the approximate value of the inheritance. Now, imagine the surprise of the experts when they found dozens of gorgeous retro sports cars in a barn on a French farm. We'll just mention the most valuable ones. The 1956 Maserati A6G Grand Sports with coachwork by prominent designer Frua, one of just three in the world. A Talbot Lego T26 Cabriolet owned by Egyptian King Farouk. But the auctioneer's greatest discovery was a 1961 Ferrari 250 GT SWB California Spider with covered headlights. Only 36 of the particular models of Ferrari were ever made. And this one belonged to Alain Delon, and it was kept for several decades under piles of dusty newspapers. The incredible collection was estimated at about $16.5 million, but that's not even the main thing. It's scary to imagine that all this beauty could have been turned into scrap metal, don't you agree? The Mystery of Stuart Little you probably know what a professional defamation is, when in ordinary life, a person begins to behave the same way as at work. For some reason, this concept is used in a negative way, although this phenomenon I still can't get over that $16 million, and we're well into the next uh, clip. $16 million. $16 million for all of that, just sitting up under a bar. $16 million phenomenon can be useful, just like in this story. In 2009, an art critic at Hungary's National Gallery in Budapest, Gergely Barki, was watching Stuart Little with his daughter on TV. The 43-year-old man wasn't interested in the adventures of the mouse, but suddenly, one of the scenes caught his attention. The researcher couldn't believe his eyes. Behind the Little family, the Sleeping Lady with Black Vase by Robert Bereni was hanging on the wall, an avant-garde masterpiece that went missing back in the 1920s. The most amazing thing is that Barky saw only a faded black and white photo of a painting from the 1928 exhibition, but he immediately recognized it. That's what a real professional means. Naturally, the man immediately rushed to send emails to virtually everyone at Sony Pictures and Columbia Pictures, and yes, he got a response. The former film set designer explained that she'd bought the canvas for next to nothing in a California antique store. The woman thought that it would look great in Stuart's living room. As a result, nine decades and a lot of adventures later, the painting returned to its homeland. The next buyer brought it to Budapest and put it up for auction with a starting price of $160,000. Best Sneakers do you think sneakers almost 40 years old, worn during hundreds of exhausting workouts, could have any value? Well, yes, but with one condition. We'll explain everything now. Before the demolition of Capitol Court Mall, its head of- If y'all thinking I'm a super sneaker head, nah, 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 I'm not. I'm, I'm not no crazy I know about sneakers a little bit, you know, not enough to make me no hype beast or sneaker head like that, you know what I'm saying? Or if I had to lean towards something, it'd be more- Sneakerhead and Hypebe, so of maintenance, Larry Ave was dismantling an abandoned warehouse and found a pair of frayed Nike sneakers that had the words My Very Best written on them. Anyone else wouldn't have even picked them up, but Larry Those look like the Jordan Ones. That's what those look like, the Jordan Ones. Now let me find out that those was Jordans or he played in them or something remembered very well that the Playmaker Sport Apparel Store used to regularly display NBA players' sneakers. Have you already guessed who owned these shoes? That's right, the black and red Air Jordans were designed for Michael Jordan, who only joined the Chicago Bulls back then. The NBA later banned the model due to aggressive colors, but the rising star continued to wear it and pay fines. Perhaps for basketball fans, these sneakers are priceless, but experts still announce the approximate cost. The buyer will have to pay $20,000 to get them. Necklace with a surprise. 
Have you already realized that you should be more attentive to the little things? You never know where an expensive painting, a celebrity's belonging, or some other surprise may be waiting for you. Fortunately, Anna from Australia is not a very observant person. When her boyfriend Terry gave her a handmade necklace on her anniversary, she didn't study it too closely. No, of course the girl was happy. The jewelry made of Tasmanian pine and seashell looks great, don't you agree? But it wasn't just an ordinary necklace. For a year and a half, Anna wore the gift, pretty much never taking it off, until the couple finally got to the cave near Derness in Sutherland. It has long been on the list of places they wanted to visit. In the smooth cave, Terry asked if he could have the necklace for a second, turned away, broke it in half, and got down on one knee, revealing that there was a wedding ring inside the necklace all this time. According to the guy, he did at times worry about his girlfriend's necklace, especially at the airports where Terry's beloved get it <laughs> like the gesture oh my gosh like it, it played out probably just like he wanted it to but normally a person spends a lot of money on an engagement ring right engagement wing red ring whatever which one ever one you use what if she lost that what if she took it off what if she you know what i'm saying like and I know people who have taken loans out to get those rings, bro. Like, bro, you really took a chance, right? I, that was the last thing I was thinking of. And y'all cannot tell me y'all was thinking that too. It could be checked with the scanner. He'd have to propose right there. Could you imagine that? Well, in the end, everything worked out just like in a romantic movie. Though after the girl said yes, she added, I could have lost that, you idiot. Good deal. A garage sale is probably the best way to get rid Wait, what did he call it? After the girl said yes, she added, I could have lost that, you idiot. Good deal. A garage sale. A garage sale? My bad, I just had to catch that. Sale is probably the best way to get rid of unnecessary junk and make some money. But if you're planning one, take a closer look at the things you want to sell. There is a risk not to earn, but to lose a fortune. Over 20 years ago, painter Rick Norsigian from California bought 65 glass negatives at a garage sale for $45. Would you keep this stuff at home? However, they seemed familiar to the man. Rick hired a lawyer, photographer, art consultant, and handwriting analyst to check his theory. It took 10 long years, until in 2010, experts confirmed that the negatives were created by the famous American photographer Ansel Adams. Just a reminder, the photos made by this guy were selected to convey information to a possibly alien civilization. They were recorded on the Voyager Golden Record. Naturally, the cost of Rick's collection grew immediately by $199,999,955. Now it's hidden away in a vault. But how did the negatives end up in the sale? The Sold. <laughs> Y'all wouldn't have had to twist my arm. Sold. As soon as he said a hundred and something million sold, he wouldn't have had to say the rest of the number. So the man who got rid of them, and who now clearly considers it the worst decision in his life, said that he acquired the pictures in the 1940s at a warehouse salvage. Maybe it's a good idea to start buying junk. Masterpiece in the Garage why is it important to understand contemporary art? First, it greatly expands your horizons. And second, who knows? Maybe one day it'll help you get rich. We're not exaggerating either. In January 2016, a neighbor helping an elderly man move noticed a signed LA Lakers poster in his garage and offered to sell it. Josh Levine, the owner of the auction house who was called to look at the poster, estimated the signed Lakers memorabilia would be worth about $300. But then, he took a quick look around the garage and froze. In the corner, he saw a painting which could cost 50,000 times more than the poster. Apparently, it was put there by people who considered it weird. Do you know who might have been its creator? Congratulations, your chances of becoming rich are quite enough. Only Jackson Pollock could do these characteristic splatters and swirls. However, at first, Levine couldn't believe his luck. Pollock in the garage of Arizona? The man decided to find out more about the owner's 
Hendricks family, and he was in for a surprise. In the 1950s, the garage owner's half-sister was considered a black sheep among her family. She preferred noisy New York to the Midwest. There, the girl rubbed shoulders with representatives of the art community, including the famous artist. After her death, her brother brought her belongings, including the canvas, to the garage. The examination only confirmed this story. Levine indeed discovered Pollock's missing painting. It'll be auctioned with bidding starting at $5 million. Underpriced ring. Bro, are y'all seeing the pattern here? We got to get ourselves into the art world, man. Who ready? I'm, 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 hey, let's do this, bro. Somebody got to be with me. We got to get in this art world, man. And now they moving into this digital space with art. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got to get in there. Yeah. You must admit that there's nothing strange about wearing artificial pearl beads or any other imitation jewellery. A woman from Great Britain thought so too, and more than 30 years ago, she bought a ring with a huge diamond at the so-called car boot sale. The ring cost her less than $14. Don't be surprised though, the stone didn't seem to be very shiny and was too big to be a real diamond, right? Well, at least both the seller and the buyer thought so. For several decades, the lady put on the ring almost every day, even did her house chores in it, and was satisfied with her successful purchase. The gem was as good as new. Was she really that clueless? The truth was revealed by chance. The jeweler who noticed the ring told the woman that it could be incredibly valuable. The head of the jewellery department at the London Auction House confirmed this. The jewellery turned out to be a ring with a 26.27 carat diamond, worth at least $480,000. It took a specialist to determine this. The stone was cut sold again. Anybody want to buy it? <laughs> Back in the 19th century, when the masters didn't care about shining. And that's why the ring didn't look like modern jewellery. Valuable plate. Did you do the dishes today? No, we're not going to shame you. It's just that one of your plates or mugs in the sink could be made by an internationally renowned artist. Believe it or not, it happens. Around 1970, the woman you now see on the screen bought this funny plate in Rhode Island for a collection. The thing cost her less than $100. Not that much for such a unique design, is it? However, at that moment, the customer didn't even suspect how exclusive it really was. For years, this cute plate sat above the stove, quietly accumulating layers of grease. It could eventually end up in a landfill, if not for an amazing coincidence. Its owner once visited the gallery, where she saw almost the same dishes. She told the guide about this, who gasped in surprise. Madame, do you keep Picasso above the stove? Yes. In the 50s, this Spanish artist produced a whole collection of tableware, and one of the items was treated so casually by the woman all these years. But what an excellent investment it turned out to be. Emperor's Lamp let us guess, you've already explored the entire house in search of something that looks like a work of art. Don't be discouraged though. Sometimes a valuable item can hide where you least expect to find it. Residents of North Wales have been walking past the lamp in their home for 50 years, without even realizing that it used to belong to the Emperor of China, Dao Guang. And it wasn't a lamp at all. The 200-year-old porcelain heirloom turned out to be an intricate hat stand. The owner's bought it at a sale, screwed in a light bulb and put it in the hallway. Have mercy, Emperor Mianing, they didn't know what they were doing. According to expert Ivy Chan, the 10-inch object gives an idea of how wealthy the Daoguang court was. Hats at that time showed rank and status, so it was customary to store accessories on refined stands. Naturally, the Emperor was supposed to have the best one. Bright dragons symbolized divine power, and the upper perforated part was filled with scented stuff. Unsurprisingly, the item was priced at over $400,000. Hidden Draw it looks like you have a good eye. Buying up items from a sale can indeed make you wealthy. See for yourself. Emil Nodell from Texas collects various antiques as a hobby, so he couldn't walk past this magnificent chest with a marble top and three drawers. The man paid $100 for the chest, began to load it into the car with the help of an assistant, and it turned out that there were actually more drawers in the chest. Something was making a loud racket on the inside, and soon the men discovered a secret compartment filled 
filled with real treasures. In addition to jewelry with emeralds, diamonds, and currency, there were also historical values, military dog tags, items from the Civil War, and a lock of hair. But this is not the most surprising thing about this story. Almost immediately after the discovery, Nodell contacted the former owner of the furniture to give him the items back. According to the man, he bought the chest drawer. That's what I'm just saying. I'm gonna say no comment on that part. Force, not the things in it. And as an ex-Marine, he was used to doing the right thing. Fortune in the fireplace. We've already talked about the dishes today, and now it's time to clean up. No, seriously, it never hurts to tidy up. And sometimes it can also make you rich. There is at least one case that confirms this. At the end of the last year, 38-year-old James Kinder from Florida decided that it was high time he cleaned his house. The guy got down to business and even decided to clean the fireplace and found an unscratched lottery ticket for the fastest road to a million dollars. James bought it for $30 a few weeks earlier and then decided that he'd done a silly thing and threw the piece of paper in the trash. Well, why not check the ticket just in case? As you may have guessed, the decision was right. For several weeks, the Kinder had a million dollars in his fireplace. Kinder elected to take a one-time lump sum payment of $790,000 before taxes, which is a bit less, but keep in mind that this amount could simply have turned into ashes. By the way, according to lottery officials, there are 155 main prizes in total. We wonder how many of them found their owners. The most important document. Remember the movie National Treasure, starring Nicolas Cage? His character, Ben Gates, had to endure various troubles to get the Declaration of Independence, where the clues leading to the treasure were hidden, while Michael O'Mara from Texas didn't even have to leave his own house to become the owner of the most important American document. The story began in the 1800s, when a copy of the Declaration was first safely hidden. Then, in the 1960s, it got into a closet in Kentucky and ended up in Houston, where it hid from Michael's eyes for 10 years. According to Michael, he always knew that his family had a copy of a historical document, but didn't think that it was that important until he found out that there were only about 50 such copies left in the world. The family relic is believed to belong to President James Madison, Michael's distant relative. In 2018, O'Mara sent the paper to the National Archives for restoration, and then sold it for an undisclosed amount. And now the main thing... <laughs> When anybody sells something undisclosed, bro, oh, he got paid big bucks. Big bucks, no whammies. Thing is to protect it from Ian Howe. Hey, buddy. Are you tired of watching videos about cute animals and heartwarming stories? I think that was it, bro. That's crazy. I'm still tripping off of the title, too, bro. That, like, that story there was crazy because she could have easily, and she would have thought nothing about it. Ah, he probably ain't paid no more than a what, $8, $4 for this somewhere? It's all right, it broke. You know what I'm saying? Probably being rough where she would have been careful. Like, fam, <laughs> like you not helping our cases out as a man, bro. They already saying that we do some crazy stuff, some some just thought, th like we just don't put that much thought into stuff. That's not helping our case, bro. Don't do that no more. And, and don't nobody get no ideas and try to copy him, bro. Cause his, that's an anomaly that, that she made it all the way through to the end and didn't lose that. You know what I'm saying? So, listen, man. Y'all get at me in the comment section, man. Let me know what y'all thought of this video. Super, super crazy. A lot of people finding a lot of treasures in different places, man. You be going to some of these auctions or some of these garage sales or garage, as he would say, these garage sales. Um, yeah, man. Keep an eye out for things, man. You never know what you come across. Dude picked up a little dresser, a little small, little three-drawer dresser, and found a lot of treasures in it. Keep your eyes peeled, man. It's your boy L. Y'all get at me. Let me know what y'all thought of this video, man. Till the next reaction of my piece, y'all stay solid. Hey.